Welcome to the um, reboot of Jack's Corner. This time I have with me on Twisted Dance from the podcast and we're going to be talking about um, animation reviewers because I don't know. I need, I needed like something quick and easy to do for this like um, episode. So like I got with me an animation reviewer I know. <laughs> to, like, talk about people, maybe, like, shit on them, who knows? Yeah, I really, I really want to shit on them, so, yeah. You know, it's really funny, because, like, I think I was introduced to your work by, like, um, your video on the cartoon community, even though you only talked about, like, six of them. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, those were the only ones I really cared for. While everyone else, I didn't really have much of. A- yeah, so I actually like asked him. I was originally gonna get this one guy on and talk about these reviewers, but he said he wasn't really up for it. So I guess I got you. I mean, don't don't take any offense to this because you're probably a much better source to talk to about, like, the cartoon reviewers on, like, YouTube and shit. Well, I mean, I'm a little biased, so maybe I'm not the best source, but that's fine. Everyone likes bias. They're more... Listen. Yeah. So, actually, like... I mean, if you click on, like, the... I could... Actually, I could, like, screen share the document. right now. So yeah, I'm gonna like... So yeah, I'm gonna like screen share um, the reviewers that like my guy was able oh, to like yeah. compile, but I also added a few others of my own. Oh. I do remember that Google Doc, and so yeah, at least I have a good idea of who we're going to talk about. We have Han Pizza here, Lorenzo, Phantom Strider, even fucking Ben Deluni. Kind of I mean, I don't know. I was thinking this recording would probably last about two hours, though maybe if we're able to time ourselves well we could probably get through them like may- maybe a reviewer in like I don't know five minutes yeah maybe it really just depends on how much we have to say so yeah let's let's leave it up to destiny okay so, so um, where are we gonna start well we're gonna start like at the top with pan oh um I mean, do you want to start, or should I start? No, I can start. Okay, so, Pan Pizza used to be prob- the benchmark for, like, cartoon reviewers. Like, his videos were very high quality. They're very well edited. He seemed to know his shit regarding, like, what shows he was into. Had a cool personality, was very open-minded about newer stuff. And he was just overall... He was too. Yeah, he was pretty much like a chill guy, but recently his videos have pretty much like taken a huge nosedive in quality. And the way I see it, it's because like he feels as though it's a job he has to do in order to like, you know, make a living. Because like... He wants to be like, he wants to work for an animation company, most notably Cartoon Network, but there's no way. But he honestly feels like he's never going to get that position, probably because either he doesn't think he's talented enough or because like his his stupid reputation where he acts like a cringe lord and such. So like when I, yeah. wa- so like, so like his more recent videos just feel bloated and like he just does them 
just because he's expected to, like, I mean, it's really hard to explain, you know, like, it's like, I, if, if you were to watch something, like, take his review about the, the movie with Taylor Lautner, that just, that, that video just seemed really padded out, like, he had to put in that bit from that Spongebob episode, where Patrick knows from Hall Monitor, yeah, that bit, and it just felt like it dragged on for fucking Fortnite, I, and that, that's yeah. basically, like, the general pattern for his videos nowadays, or the ones that, the ones where he actually, like, appears and not, like, the podcast crap, you know? I yeah, mean, the... I, I completely agree. I think his videos went down, it's kind of, like, it's kind of hard to tell where exactly he stopped, because it seemed like before, the appeal of his channel was more so the fact that like for starters, he he was usually a lot more positive than most people were, and it seemed like that positivity came from a place of appreciation for the craftsmanship. But it's I don't even know if I if I were to watch his videos, I would felt I would feel the same way because I don't I don't want to say my standards are bigger or higher now, but I don't know I have a certain requirement for review now and so even there i do doubt whether or not i would still like his videos as i before but it wasn't just that you know he also had a pretty like fun personality um there were a couple yeah he was uh, pretty cringy even to this day he's very cringy. but that cringiness came from a place of relatability it, you you were almost like you know what i'm actually glad that pen is this Cringy because now I feel even less cringy seeing him doing all this really cringeworthy shit. And for me, I have to point out at his like personality and humor because there was a certain point around the beginning of the year where he he sounded kind of bitter. He sounded kind of like um, he wasn't enjoying himself anymore. But you can tell from his delivery of because he always tries to like. Um, talking this very like excited like sort of happy tone but you can tell that he's not happy that he's actually really fucking tired of doing his job and that always like made the experience a lot more uncomfortable and yeah his jokes just kind of like he also like occasionally stretches his videos out like there are certain jokes that go on for way too fucking long um i don't think he's funny anymore and, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna take a guess here as to when he started, like, declining quality, and I'm gonna say it was as far back as 2016, because I remember, like, his video on, um, top 10 worst reboots or adaptations, that one, I mean, I, I th it was the one where he talked about lunatics, and some of the bits, some of the clips in there seemed to, like, they they seem to like he, he they seem to like go on for a bit, like at this point he was starting to become a little bit less late. He was starting to become like you know lazy with his editing, or or he just wanted to like stretch out clips so he could like get a a good enough like um length for his like videos so he could like get money off of them you know because like he said yeah. the longer your video is, the more you're likely to like get revenue from it. Yeah, if you look at his older videos, some of them didn't even reach like ten minutes, and they were like top ten. Like there were they were like top ten videos, the same, the same type of shit he does now, except they were shorter, and they were shorter because they were like um, he wasn't really trying to. Re I mean, he was like kind of sharing his thoughts, but you know, most of them were just bits. Like he was just kind of being humorous. That's why some of the some of the segments were short because you know he already made the joke. He doesn't need to like spend fucking minutes saying shit that's not really that funny. It's dragging the video on, but now he's kind of obligated to do that. Yeah, like like it like there's no way 
that anyone will ever like point this out to pan probably because they can't notice it and you know it's really hard it's really hard to explain like just how something should be timed or how timing works in general like i don't know how it fucking works but when i watch his videos i feel like i feel like something's off like I guess a good comparison would be watch Pan's Woody Woodpecker movie review and then watch I Hate Everything's. Like, I think I Hate Everything's is longer, but it's paced much better and has, like, not only better analysis, but better jokes. Yeah. Although, to be, f- to be fair, I'm pretty sure um, Pan was the one who made the joke about uh, Woody Woodpecker um, killing that family, which was fucking hilarious. Um, I will give him credit for that. Uh, yeah, I think I remember... The thing is, like, I Hate Everything is also someone I think it went downhill. So, but since we're talking about cartoon reviewers, we're not going to dwell on him. So, well, I mean, he reviewed Big I don't... Mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he sometimes he makes... Man, but but yeah. no, he's not. He's just like a movie reviewer. He's not like yeah. what we're talking about. Remember when he was a drama guy, but now he talks about kind of safe. Now, but whatever. Let's get back to the topic. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if his videos were, was better, but it probably was because I thought both of them were boring. But maybe it's because I don't really care about that. Yeah, that's fair enough. But I'm trying to think, like... Oh, speaking of Pan, I guess, like, the podcast. I haven't been listening to that in, like, fucking months. I haven't watched Pan videos in, like, a month. Literally. Not, neither his podcast nor his main videos. I just don't care anymore. I mean, to be... I don't know. I feel like I... YouTube is something that... I still watch YouTube, but I feel like my content hub is a lot more centralized. I don't think I'm as open to other channels as I want to be because I just don't really like most things going on YouTube. But yeah. Yeah. So I guess like we can move on to um the I guess what who should have been like the first person we talked about Mr. Enter. Oh, Mr. Enter. Um, are we gonna be positive or are we going to be negative? I I don't yeah. really want to be negative about Enter. Like, I think like everything negative about Enter has already been said. I guess it would be better to like. <laughs> just talk about how he could have done a better job as like being a cartoon reviewer instead of just becoming like the mess we know him as yeah I thought there was one thing about enter and I mean it's kind of not his fault but at the same time he was he is to blame for this like okay I watched movie reviews, cartoon reviews, anime reviews, and all that stuff. And one thing I've noticed is that the cartoon community seems to be the most prevalent when it comes to lessons and characters being asked. And I don't know if it's fair to blame on Enter for this, but at the same time, given his popular him and Phantom Strider, given both Given how both of them have like a huge following, I can't help but wonder that he's the reason why a lot of people have this perception, like this sort of grudge against mean spirited humor and stuff like that. Is uh, yeah. I think yeah. I know who to blame for like Enner's like style of reviewing, and it's pretty obvious when you've like seen enough of his videos that he was heavily inspired by nostalgia critic i mean is the nostalgia critic like that as well i mean i mean i mean even if he was like nostalgia critic was mainly a comedian if he was ever like making jokes about characters being like assholes they were probably just jokes like why would enter 
being like see that perceive that as legit criticism to offer. No, the way I, I see know. it is that like most nostalgia critic fans who went on to become reviewers saw him as like a reviewer first and an entertainer second. So this is why you got like an influx of like I don't I I mean I don't want to say man children but they kind of are in a way who would like review like a certain show or movie and like just go through the whole fucking thing like nitpicking or critiquing it whatever you want to oh, fucking yeah. call it. Offering like really I mean, lame ass is jokes. Nostalgia, is that nostalgia critic? Here? What? Is that nostalgia critic on our list? No. Like he oh, he he's like fine. I hate everything. He he talks about cartoons and he's obsessed with cartoons too. But he's just a general reviewer. Yeah, because I don't like his style of review. I think it's bad. Like I think if you, <laughs> I think that if you just spend like most of your video like recapping the entire plot like you're not even being a reviewer you're just being a recap guy who occasionally offers your shitty opinion and like that's just a really bad way of reviewing stuff and that's what enter basically was he was like nostalgic he was like nostalgia critic but like without I don't even know if Enner was even trying to be funny because like when I watched his videos he never seemed to make any jokes he would just like talk about the show and like just shit on it you know yeah i mean have you like if you see enter's review on that um the, the total drama total drama drama like there were times when because here's this is something i also have a this is a huge problem i have with um mr enter animated atrocity series is that the main premise of that type of video is that you only point out the negative. Now, I mean, whatever, I guess. You know, if that's what you want to be. Or if you want to be like kind of cinema scenes, except your criticism's wrong, I guess, fine. But there were times when Mr. Enter would just point out stuff that isn't really a flaw. Like, there were times when he would just kind of admit, yeah, I guess it's like that. But he also... He would always try to see that in the most negative light possible, because that's just the premise of his video. He just has to be negative, even when there's no reason to be negative at all. And I feel like this is something that he should consider revamping, because that type of that style of review it just kind of makes him come off as kind of unlikable, because you just don't want to see someone who just shits on something for no, like for no like uh, justifiable reason. You're just shitting on it just. Us. Yeah, like Enter's. I guess another turn off of Enter is he only focuses on, like on story and characters, not on like stuff like animation or humor. Well, I mean, I think he focuses on humor as long as he finds it funny. But he seems to like never talk about like how a sh the animation or like you know like what the art style is, how the characters are move like that kind of stuff like and he probably yeah. learned a bunch about animation while b being a reviewer so it's just weird how he seems to ignore it for the most part unless he wants to talk about how a show looks when like art style animation are two different concepts yeah i mean i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him a little bit of credit and say that he's i think he's trying his best to uh improve that as i think um, sometimes he does talk about the animation and art style, not not nearly as much as he talks. But, but there are times when he, it seems like he's trying. It seems like maybe someone pointed that out and he says, "Yeah, you know what? I am a fucking so gotta talk about the animation as well." So yeah, I just think he's trying. I don't think he's. I think he could do better, but you know, I'll give him props. Yeah. I mean, I can't really fault him for, like, getting an editor. I mean, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, oh, the, the person who, like, uploads the video should edit it. But it's like, that, that's fucking dumb. If, I mean, if you can't edit, yeah, then just hire someone that can do it for you, you know? I mean, they should do a better job than, like, what you were able to do, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, also, um, other forms of media also involve collaboration, so why should YouTube be different? I don't know. I guess, like, with YouTube, everyone expects you to do the hard work by yourself. Unless, like, you're one of those big channels, like, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, a, it, it's a bad argument. Yeah. And then, like, um, I guess the big thing that happened at Enter this year was, like, growing around and how that Indiegogo just failed, which really wasn't surprising to me, because, like, there was no way his audience was ever going to fund a, a budget like that. It was just astronomical. It was... I didn't even pay attention to that campaign, to be honest, because when I saw it, I was like... Oh, it's going around. That's one thing that has puts a lot of passion to it. I didn't really care because I don't know. Um, yeah, the budget seemed a little too excessive, and I don't know. I I kind of knew he would fail, but I didn't really want him to fail because I don't want him to fail on his campaign. You know, I mean, if he says that he puts a lot of uh, puts a lot of effort into it. I think I think it's reasonable for him to um, make it. I mean, I'm I would be curious. I'm not sure if I would like it, but I would be curious. So I didn't really want him to fail, but I kind of knew that he would. Yeah. So yeah. It was like a Sisyphean task for him. I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I'm not gonna like make fun of him for failing but it's it's just like it was an inevitability and it's just really depressing to think about but yeah enough about yeah. enter let's move on to strider strider is fucking bad it's really awful <laughs> i think my opinion on Panther strider has become even more negative than the first time i talked about him oh like, my, oh my god was, like, like I I don't I'm I can't like I I'm legit surprised that in my video talking about the cards it was mostly reviewers for that anyway I'm surprised at how positive I was that if I were to ever make a video on Phantom Shutter it would most but that guy sucks. Like, I don't even know where Strider gets his, like, viewpoints from. Like, does he genuinely just think this? Like, or, or is he just saying it just to get attention? Like... I think he's... I, I honestly... I want to believe that he's doing it for attention. Because, okay, Phantom Strider's philosophy is very easy to identify. The guy usually doesn't like unlikable characters that don't get his don't get their comeuppance he uh he's really fucking strict with lessons even it doesn't really matter all that much but yeah those are things that he usually harp which is strange because he loves invader zim which defies both of those things like hilariously so if he loves that show, then clearly he's not against characters being unlikable and bad lessons. So why the fuck is he so strict with that stuff? Like, is he is he lying? Like, is he pretending to be some kind of pussy just so he can, I don't know, get more attention? I don't know. I mean... That that just makes no sense. Like, if he loves Invader Zim so much, how could he hate something as vanilla bland as Scooby Doo? And yeah, I know like Scooby Doo has a bunch of fucking iterations, but come on, like no one in Scooby Doo is like unlikable except for the villain, and they always get caught at the end. So, I mean, it's just yeah, I have no idea what's in his goddamn mind. It's just so weird, like. The guy said Scooby Doo's bad because most of their iterations are pointless. So now you think the entire franchise is bad? What a 
that's, that's just such a bad argument, dude. There's like, like no overlap can... between most of those series. Like, he 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 literally said in a video, like, Gooby Doo has gone on for way too long that it just became bad. No, something becomes bad when quality decreases. If you have examples of certain iterations of Scooby Doo that are bad, then. Include those ones on the list, but I'm pretty sure he didn't even watch them because that's the thing. I'm pretty sure that if he were to actually watch all of the Scooby Doo incar- incarnations, he probably would have an example of the worst. But he's probably just too fucking lazy to do so. And the guy hasn't even watched Mister Incorporated. How? Why am I supposed to trust his opinion on? Oh, he probably loved Mister Incorporated. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But, he also doesn't like regular show. Oh, Here. why? Because Mordecai and Rigby are like freaking slackers and they fight each other and Benson always yells at them. Yeah. You know, just because like your characters are jerks doesn't mean that like you, you don't find them likable. I mean, like, sure, Rigby can be a tool, but at least I f- relate to him because like... He's such a fucking weakling. Yeah. I mean, I like Rigby. Rigby Rigby for a long time used to be my favorite character. And I don't even know who's my favorite character now because, I don't know, my opinion on all those characters aren't really that different now. But there was a time, I don't remember when, but I was like, yeah, Rigby's my favorite character. This guy's, like, really funny. And he's, Yeah. He also said that the characters don't change and grow, and that Mordecai and Rigby don't care about anything, even though if you watch most of the episodes in regular show, they're usually helping someone. And then there's also the fact that both of them went through character development. But let's be real, Phantom Strider probably only watched the first five episodes and made his judgment. Like, he probably has no idea about all the romantic bullshit Mordecai went through the fact that Rigby was able to like graduate high school and actually hook up with Eileen yeah but going back to Strider one video that like I guess summarizes all his problems was the one he did on Bugs Bunny cartoons because the criteria for it was just it was just messed up like it starts out with him just listing like theatrical Bugs Bunny shorts, but then he like puts in an episode from the Looney Tunes show, which has which the focus is on Yosemite Sam, and then like his number one spot was just Baby Looney Tunes, all of that series. Like, so was this supposed to be like worst Bugs Bunny cartoons, or was this supposed to be worst Looney Tunes incarnations? Because like, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> My least favorite video from Strider will forever be um, the one he made on um, anime I hate that everyone else loves. I that that video was that video was terrible. Jesus Christ! Even Sword Art Online, dude. Sword Art Online is like the easiest thing to shit on, but he fucked it up. And the guy said like, "Oh, Phantom." No, he said, um, "Oh, Sword Art Online." takes place in fucking video games they're just they're just trying to appeal to our fantasies yeah no shit that's the appeal of the series what the fuck is wrong with you and besides sword art online is the anime equivalent of teen titans go so he probably just added it on there because he knew someone would agree with that opinion yeah i mean he did say on twitter that he wasn't aware of how hated the series is so Mm. let's give him the benefit of the doubt uh yeah he also I don't remember what he said about Neon Genesis Galleon he said something about I I think he said something about the series being more appealing as a teenager more so than as an adult something like that maybe or maybe I'm confusing the opinions I don't remember but I don't know I, I do also remember his opinions on Ava being kind of weird. But, uh, whatever. Since I don't remember, I'm not going to dwell. Then there was the whole light Yagami thing, and that was just... 
Like, you can't... Like, does Phantom Shire even understand the appeal of Death Note? No, like, he I, probably doesn't. Question. I mean, like, I've never seen Death Note, and I can at least see why people like it, because they like the suspense shit, they like shipping light and L. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's this point in the video where he said, like, um, yeah, Death Note makes no goddamn sense, because you, you have this, like, teenager who managed to uh, outsmart the police. Like, he was all like... How could he do that? I'm like, dude, watch the fucking series. They explain how he managed to outsmart the police. Oh, I, I don't want to. I think I'm getting angry. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm so, that is just really bad. You know, I don't know. If you, you know, most of those anime he talked about are kids shows, so of course he would complain about them. No, yeah, like, except for Elfin Lead. That yeah. for special. Well, Elfin Lead is like a whole nother level of garbage. I mean, I haven't actually seen Elfin Lead, but it doesn't—it doesn't seem like something good. But whatever. It's not. That it was like. You could say it was like the Sword Art Online of its day. Except edgier. Yeah. But, okay. Now, let's get into someone that will probably be less harsh on Pie Guy Rules. Oh. Um, eh, he's, he's cool. I don't have much issue with him. Uh, yeah. He's cool. I so, think... Yeah, he's cool. I think Pie Guy Rules is one of those people you'll either love or hate because, like... Well, not just because of, like, what he talks about, but also because he doesn't use any media clips. Which I think is kind of an interesting way that he was able to get around um, YouTube's bullshit. Where, like, he would just have some, like... He, he would just, like, have his, like, face or the PyCons, like, change mood for whatever he was talking about. I, don't know, I thought that was pretty yeah. clever of him. But then, it, but I, I also it. like his analysis stuff. Like, he's not too wordy, but it also seems like he knows what he's talking about to an extent. Though, yeah, his bottom of the bakery videos are pretty good. Like, they're legitimately one of my favorite series. I think they're, they, they're really fun. They're really fun videos. He needs to continue the SETI stuff because man he, he he just seemed like he was gonna tear into tear that shit a new asshole <laughs> yeah um i do i do however think that pie guy is somewhat of a tragic channel because uh, the guy's been around for quite a while like he's yeah. a he's a real youtube veteran but the guy only has like I remember when he used to make rants on, like, Nickelodeon, and all he had was just, like, the, the his, like, channel name on the background, and he was, like, talking through this shitty microphone before he became, like, the reviewer we all know him as. Yeah. Yeah, most of his older videos don't really hold up. Like, try to watch his, his older videos. They're not very good. Uh, yeah. I guess that's kind of what made his growth a little harder but I also think that because there was a uh, I guess to some extent even now but like a couple of years ago he used to uh, make vlogs and also these like rants and stuff and the vlogs were mostly unscripted and he would just film himself and with the rants they were also unscripted and he, it was just like a picture of Pi Guy I and think... so his videos yeah. I think he's done a lot better with like unscripted stuff. Like if you listen to the podcast, he he's able to like articulate his thoughts so well. Yeah. I mean, I don't really listen to the podcast, but I have I have heard bits of it and you're right. He does he's decent. He's a decent podcaster. But yeah, but before he wasn't as um experience with this and not to mention his videos were like visually stagnant and boring 
and I I got I have a feeling that that's probably the reason why it it it, it, it became harder for him to grow up. Because look at like Mr. Enter. You you're gonna tell me that his older videos are better than guys, but the guy included footage even if some of them were like moved. And yeah, it seemed like there was some amount of coherency. Not really coherency. That actually doesn't didn't really have much. Okay, they were. They seemed kind of tight enough. I guess that was a little more appealing than Five Guys older videos, which made uh, Mr. Andrew grow a lot faster. Yeah, I guess like having video footage does give you. A- a heads up above like others, but I can at least respect Pie Guy for like sticking to his guns for this long. But I guess, yeah. wait, I, I remember you said you never really got into his SpongeBob reviews because you never saw SpongeBob. Like, I guess that's like one reason why I've stayed around with, stuck around with him so long was because like I've pretty much seen most of the episodes of Spongebob he's familiar with, mainly like seasons 1 through 7, and I guess some of 8, too. So there's kind of like a connection between him and him just tearing apart Spongebob. Also, he's really he was really into Adventure Time, and he, I remember when he did like vlogs of seasons 5 and 6, though he eventually stopped with 6 when that, when that just turned out to be a fucking cum bucket yeah season 6 is underrated but let's not get into that uh yeah maybe someday I I like my guy maybe someday when I decide to do a Jack's Corner on Adventure Time we, I could talk. I could probably talk about season six to someone. I don't know, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. All right, we're done praising one guy. Let's let's shit on another. Ben the Looney. Oh, uh, Ben the Looney. Okay. Um, which subject are we tagged? With? Videos or his reputation? Because I have. More opinions on his on the second part than I do on his because I don't really watch. I mean, no one really watches his videos. We just we just talk about his reputation anyway. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I don't really know where to start because I feel like whatever answer I give, it's actually you know what this is gonna be uploaded on Tristan's on Tristan's channel, so it's probably not even. Um, um, I think it's over hate. And, again, um, yeah, I don't think he deserves the amount of backlash because he draws. And this is coming from someone who thinks his drawings are bad. Like, I think, he do- I don't think he's a very good artist. I think he, he, he needs to improve, but. I guess I just don't really care if he draws lolly cons. I don't even I don't even know if he actually draws lolly art. I think he just draws like adult versions of children characters. Yeah, but I yeah, think I, really I think care. that's what he tries to do too. But he's not really good at like trying to age them up. So it looks like he just draws sexier versions of like these children characters, which is just like, which is pretty. Which is kind of distasteful, since, like, <laughs> most of us would never want to get be attracted to these characters, like... Yeah. But, like, my, my, my defense to that, um, um, I don't like his drawings, but I don't think it's bad that he does it. Uh, yeah. I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Like, and I feel like people give him shit just because he draws things, and I, I don't. I guess I'm just kind of using the don't like, don't, don't like, don't watch kind of argument. But I guess that's really the only thing I can say. You know, if you don't like his drawings, don't look at. Them. I mean, now, if you have, 
Yeah. That's kind of like the tragedy of Ben. Like, on one hand, if you... No, wait. I'm, I'm trying to, like, think about what I was fucking going to say. I lost my goddamn train of thought. But, like, Ben is... I'd, I'd rather much prefer this version of Ben than, like, his old version where he would just, like, complain about newer cartoons and praise the old ones. Because, like, nowadays he seems like a much chiller guy. Like... like yeah, I agree. Like, he gives newer shows a chance, at least. Or he probably just watches them to wank at them. I don't know. Now, if you watch, I, 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 I saw his video on Easy Peasy, and he seems like a fine dude. Like, I think if I were to have a conversation with him, it would be okay, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't think he would get along with me. I, I've made so much fun of his art that he, he'd probably <laughs> not like me. And I just gotta say, his his art really isn't good. I mean, that that's pretty it's, obvious, it's but... Bad. And, like, even if he keeps saying he, he'll improve, I don't know if he ever really will. Or if he'll actually, like, try to do a better job at, like, drawing 18-plus versions of these characters. I mean, he went to, like, art school, right? But... These drawings look really fucking amateur. Yeah. Like I think I'm pretty sure I've even said this before that it seems like he draw he drew that on Anime Studio because the line work really does resemble something unpolished from Anime Studio. And like yeah, I just think he needs to improve, dude. Yeah, but he he won't listen to you. He'll he'll pretty much assume that he is getting better and in a way he has gotten a lot better than like what he used to draw, but I, sometimes I wonder if certain people just weren't born to draw that they tried their hardest like every fucking time but they just can't come up with something satisfying and it's just a tragedy man yeah Ben DeLuny comes off as someone who likes cartoons but isn't necessarily someone who was made to draw cartoons Something like that. I mean, I don't want to give him too much flack. Maybe he will improve, but so far, they're not good. I don't know. Maybe in a few years he'll he'll moved on. I mean, I don't know. It, it's like it's like this is a phase. I have no idea even when he made this transformation from like becoming just easily mocked cartoon reviewer to easily mocked smut illustrator. <laughs> yeah. And, like, most of this stuff isn't even that controversial. It just looks bad. <laughs> yeah, th that's the part that really fascinates me. Everyone's all like, hey, you're drawing fucking children sex in sexual situations, you pedophile shit. I'm just looking, I'm like, really? That's what you're focusing on? What about the fact that their drawings, like, look terrible? I mean, people yeah. point that out, too. I mean, he's not, like, Shad, man. He's not gonna draw, like, porn of some, like, underage girl who's, like, real. Wait, what? The Shadman does that? I... He's done that a couple of times. Like, I remember, I think, after the 2016 election if Hillary won he would draw like new, he would draw like Keemstar's daughter nude but no or or was that his daughter I don't or was that Shadman's own daughter I don't know okay that, that, that's a that, that that's a whole new level of creepy yeah what I'm what we're trying to say is Ben the Looney is not Shadman even though he wants to be Shad yeah he's just not as Shad Okay, so, um, oh, here, we got a real wild card here, um, Mars Reviews. Oh, um, Mars Reviews is funny. I think he's a good entertainer. I don't necessarily think he's a great critic, but I think his points, um, are well communicated. It's, they're well communicated, like, enough me to understand his point of view and um yeah i think he i won't say he's like 
I won't say he's like the better version of Pan because I think Pan is a little more um, knowledgeable in animation. Not to say that Mars Reviews doesn't know anything about animation. In fact, there have been videos where he sort of defended um, Cinema Miller and uh, Cartoon Network business practices. And his point of view were, his point of views were like a lot more reasonable than everyone else's that are just fucking dumb. So like, yeah, he definitely knows more about animation than I guess a lot of people do. But I don't think it's on the same level as because I don't know if it's because Pan has more animation history, but get this. But I think that both of them um, in some ways try to kind of do the same thing, except for Marsh Reviews also try to do like retrospective stuff. But in terms of reviews, both of them like try to make like humorous reviews with a couple of um, clips here and there for gags and stuff. And like, yeah, I just think if Mars Reviews is a lot better at doing that, this fan just went downhill. I think that, I don't know, like, I think Mars Reviews has gotten a lot better with his videos. Like, like his humor is a lot tighter. I mean, even though he, I, I don't know, him being all deadpan just makes like whatever jokes he comes up with funnier. And I don't know. I just got yeah, a yeah, thing for like his whole black um community jokes. I don't know. I just find that stuff funny. Like I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but I don't know. No, I agree. I also, I also think it's funny. Like he seems like a very knowledgeable animation fan. Not like an animation expert, but just, like, a fan, probably because, and he doesn't even seem like the kind of person who would watch, like, cartoons or anime. Well, he'd probably watch anime and play video games, but he doesn't seem like the guy who would watch, like, cartoons, you know, which makes, like, him being very, like, knowledgeable and, like, doing stuff like, you know, defending Cartoon Network scheduling practices, like, kind of refreshing. Yeah. I also, I also think that he's seen a lot of cartoons. Um, if you like watch his, his videos, you 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 always like see him uh, point out like really obscure stuff, and you're like, yeah, I like this guy. Yeah. He seems to he seems to be somewhat of a veteran that comes to cartoons. Like, I like, I, I like that idea. Like, Mars taught me... Mars introduced me to the second season of George of the Jungle. Like, I knew about that show, but I had no idea they brought it back a decade later. And that was, like, the best video he's ever made. Yeah. I didn't even know it had a second season. And I used to like that series. I didn't watch it. And again, how does he even find out about this shit? That's just how much of an of a fan of cartoons he is. He's able to like track down obscure shit and just sell it with a straight face. Like, yeah, he's good. It's a shame that he doesn't upload that much, but when he does, it's always he got his like channel taken down, which was unfortunate because like. I mean, he's still on Twitter, and his Twitter's fucking hilarious because it's nothing but shit posts. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was that meme of that ca- that 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 fat character from Jimmy Neutron. That was that was that was really. Yeah. Uh, I also liked his retrospectives on like Comedy Central and MTV's animated programming. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, we've been we've been like positive about some for the first time. No, we did on Pie Guy rules, I guess. But yeah, Mars reviews are probably like the most positive we. I mean, we were positive on Pie Guy, but and we were, I guess, like I don't know if we were negative towards Enter, but we were more or less just like lamenting him. Yeah. Okay. I guess like now let, let's get the positivity out of the way and move on to Saber Spark. Eh. Ah. I, don't, uh, I don't know what to say, dude. This guy's just really fucking boring, dude. Uh, okay. I do. I'll say, I one, do. I'll say one thing. Um, in 2016, he seemed kind of interesting when he was making his videos on what, what ruined uh, what ruined Cartoon Network, what 
voting and stuff. But after that, like, I don't know, dude. Are you like I, I'm? I'm very curious. Do you watch his videos on like bad animated movies? I used to I, watch, I watch those, them. but I just got tired of them because it was all the same shit. Yeah, because that's the thing about like these movies are like they're movies that no one no one gives a shit. No one cares about all of these bad, badly animated, cheap Netflix movies and stuff. No one really cares, and. The joke is that, ha, look at how bad this is. But guess what? This is fucking YouTube. Like, there are shit little videos like that. And by people who are much better critics than Saber Spark. And, like, if, I don't know, like, Saber Spark, I'm sure he has fun making those videos, but he doesn't really seem like he's passionate about those. He, I mean,. The only amount of passion he might have is like, oh my god, like movies can get this bad. But other than that, like, like if I want to watch a negative, like really fucking harsh uh, review, I like it more when the critic is like really passionate about the thing they're reviewing. Like, for example, um, actually, I don't really have an example. I don't know. Uh, when your movie sucks, made a video on the Amazing Spider-Man two because Spider-Man is the only superhero he actually likes. And um, yeah, that, that video was really funny because like he was really fucking passionate about it. I mean, he he wasn't really taking himself seriously, but he did care if that that movie was bad. It, yeah, you know stuff like that. I like I like those kinds of negative reviews. If you're just gonna shit on something because it looks and sounds and it is bad, I'm like, okay, but do it in an interesting way because there are a shitload of videos out there that are negative. So what's What's so special about yours? Yeah. I mean, I guess for me, like, when he does his, like, you know, when he talks about these bad movies, he only focuses on, like, ugly CG films usually made by, like, one person or, like, a small staff. I mean, it was kind of cool initially to see him talk about Joshua and the Promised Land because that was a movie that my brother knew about. And, but, but like, when you watch the video, it's just, like, he just goes through the whole thing and just, and just, like, shows, and just, like, is, like, what the hell is this awful-looking shit? That, that's, like, the whole fucking thing. It's, like, no shit I could tell this thing looks like garbage. You don't have to fucking tell me. And then, and, like, also, don't fucking spam that, 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 that lion saying no over and over again. That's not a good running gag. Yeah. I think he's trying to be like, I hate everything, where he just kind of creates a meme off of a line, but it's not that funny, dude. And his editing also, isn't as great as I hate everything. So it's pretty, it's pretty, me, it's pretty medium paced, if that's even a thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't, I, I mean, he does have the, the whole um, reaction to the movies. I haven't seen them, and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that perhaps those videos are better because I think that when you watch a bad movie alongside friends, it's a little more fun to watch because they're not really taking the movie seriously and they're just making like, like the joke comes from their chemistry more so than how bad the movie is. So who knows? Maybe those videos are better, but the ones where he actually reviews them, like they're boring, dude. Also his and, like what ruined videos are pretty boring too like the, it's he's more or less recounting shit i already know and, and and there's really like no incentive for me to watch them i just like watch them because i've been doing it for the longest time and that's the sad thing about saber like he's a, a nice guy he's like strider in a way but well okay he's a lot more talented and knowledgeable than strider but he's just boring he's like He's like a freaking history professor. I mean, no, actually, no. I've had history professors that were more in interesting to listen to than That's like That's what Saber. I wanted to say. I also had history teachers that are more interesting. Man, I had one that was like an expert on on Germany and Hitler. Like he was cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean if. Saber Spark like saw a movie that that referenced Hitler. He would probably like, spend like five minutes. I'm like, 
Oh my god, did they actually do that? Oh god. Oh okay, okay. I'm so, I know we were harsh on Saber, but I know this next one we're going to probably gush about Nintendo. Oh. Um I mean, what where where do I even begin? Um Nintendo's the Nintendo probably puts Okay, um excluding Robot Buddy. And even then, we're only talking about one video. But anyway, I think Nintendo puts more research than any other cartoon reviewer I've seen. Um, I just, I don't know, man. I've never seen a cartoon reviewer that puts the same amount of research that he puts. Um, granted, if we're, I'm only talking about Western animation. I mean, if we're talking about anime, then no. Nintendo's nowhere near the top, but in the Western animation field, I feel like he puts a decent amount of research more than a lot of people do, and um, like, yeah, he's. I think he's a good. I think he's a good reviewer. I think that he makes a lot of good points. Um, I um, think that. Wait. Yeah. You go. You go on. Oh. Okay. Um, I was just saying that I think that his subject, well. Mine is the SpongeBob ones because I don't care that much about SpongeBob. But most of the subjects he tackles are interesting enough. I really liked his video on Johnny Test. I think the the topic was good, was really good. Even though Johnny Test hasn't really been that relevant recently, I think that him wanting to tackle Johnny Test the way he did was interesting. I liked it. Um, yeah, dude, I, I like the guy. Yeah, I think that. Nintendo has shown the most improvement out of any reviewer out there because like when he started out his videos were very simplistic like you know talking about star versus but then like as he moved on and like his editing got better his humor got better his I guess writing and research increased tenfold he's just become like it's it's become it's gone to the point where I could probably say he's my favorite cartoon reviewer currently because I know whenever he comes out with something like interesting, I'm gonna probably watch it like over and over again. Like that Johnny Test video he came out with, that was that was amazing. Like yep. that that show made me see a cartoon that I I thought was like garbage in a new light and that that is a lot that is like the best thing I can say is that like when you're able to make me respect Johnny Test on some level then you're you're doing God's work man <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah I mean I also think he's my favorite though then again um uh, that that's not really much of an achievement because most cartoon reviewers are mediocre, but whatever. He might as well, um, or like he earned that title. Is what I'm. I mean, he stole it from Pan. Yeah, but Pan sucks, and Robo Buddy doesn't really upload reviews anymore. In fact, um, she recently uploaded a video saying that she's not. Really God damn it, videos. Robo! You're not Ralph the Movie Maker. Well, I mean, that's what I have. I mean, I to be fair, I think she, I think I understand why she quit. Right, well, she said that YouTube was the most stressful job she ever had, and I I, I kind of understand why. Oh, we'll talk about Robo later, but now, let, oh, oh my fucking god! I had to like put his name after Nick's. No. Oh, Animat. Um, like, what do you want me to say about anime? <laughs> I, I don't what care do you want to say? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be nice and say he's okay. That's all I can say. It, it's really funny because like a few weeks ago, me and some of my friends were like watching like his reviews on like the sony animated films and he just he just destroyed them like one thing i never understood was why he hated sony so much and like yeah they did the emoji movie but they also did hotel transylvania and cloudy with a chance of meatballs like he doesn't like those movies 
I'll never understand his reasoning for it. Does he hate it because, like, the story is weak, the animation is too bouncy? Or, like... Okay, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know how honest he's being, but... I mean, if we're going to talk about... Okay, I am willing to believe that he's not lying and say that he does, in fact, dislike the movies. As for why he's so excessive, why he likes uh, making fun of so animation all the time, I think he's just doing. I think he's just doing that as a as a sort of meme. Like anime is trying to kind of like be like Digibro, where he hates A One Pictures, so he's all like, "Yeah, I hate Sony Pictures. They're bad." And well, he could have picked you know, Illumination, I'm... and the joke still would have been the same. Yeah. And so yeah. I will say one thing about anime since this is pretty much this is honestly this is probably the only subject I can really tackle because I can't don't care about anime. um that that was the whole um what's the name of that uh oh high guardian spice um there was something he said on that video and it's something he really fucking emphasized including in the following video where he addressed Percy. And he said he really like he really like obsessed over the fact that the series hadn't hadn't really uh, it wasn't out yet. So judging the series, even though it wasn't doesn't really make. Now I personally don't agree with that sentiment because I think that trailers should also be judged under old. Yeah, you can't predict the quality of something if it's not out yet. But you know that doesn't mean you can't make judgment. But the, here's the thing, though. I'm not even sure if he actually believes in that statement because a couple of years ago when the Emoji movie was announced, some people said the exact same thing. I'm like, yeah, the movie's not out yet. And anime was all like, yeah, you guys are a bunch of fucking idiots. Obviously, this movie's going to be bad. Like, being kind of a hypocrite, anime. <laughs> yeah, like, I think at this point, I... <laughs> yeah, his hatred for the Emoji movie is really irritating like me and a buddy saw that like last year and like while we think it's bad we don't really think it's like the worst animated film ever i mean shit the stuff i've seen with my brother is like or and my friends is like 10 times worse than the emoji movie and he thinks that's like the the ultimate plague on like animation and animated films yeah i i think people just hate the emoji movie more so because of how cynical it is which i don't like i don't like i don't disagree with anyone i i understand the hatred for them i think that that was a really fucking just corporate cynical move that should not be encouraged so. it's a soulless product yeah. it's not really cynical i mean i would yeah i guess uh yeah um, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna begrudge anime for not liking Percy. Although I think that he can at times go a little bit overboard with the hatred for Sony Pictures. Not to the point where I honestly care that much, but it's not like it's just not fun seeing something, seeing someone do that. I'm like, okay, we get the. You don't like Sony animation. You don't need to harp. You don't, you don't need to constantly bring that up. Yeah. Okay, so, like, um... So now we're moving on to, like, cell specs. Um, I've seen... I don't think I've really seen, like, all of her material. All I... Like, the best I could think describe her is that she's female animat and that she just, like, reviews animated films. Uh... Animated films bore me, which is probably why I haven't seen Cell Spec. What's her name again? Uh, Cell Spec. I don't even know her name. Cell Spec. Cell Spec. Yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I don't watch her. Yeah. Most of the stuff she reviews animated movies. And I stopped watching animated movies a long time ago. Like, I know what I'm getting, so unless something like really. Captivating. 
Um, I, I'll never so understand that. people that watch movies all the time instead of TV shows because I grew up on, like watching mostly TV shows and I kind of like shied away from films. I mean, not because I hate movies, but I just like prefer watching TV than like film. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. I feel like people... I mean, I get that films have higher budgets, so it makes the present a lot better, but still have, like, well presented shows that look good. And I don't know, I just think that television shows are more digestible. Yeah. I don't know. Like, there's oh, yeah. nothing to say. Oh. Though, I guess going back to Animan, I just remembered watching his, like, History of Looney Tunes shit, and those videos feel like fucking Wikipedia articles. I mean, let's be real, he probably read the- He probably just, like, got most of- he probably just, like, copy-pasted the Wikipedia article on Bugs Bunny and called it a day. Yeah, I mean, for it to be otherwise, would it- would imply that Animat has a first. So yeah, um, Animat's average. I don't even. Okay, here here's another one. My guy added um gem reviews. I've heard of this person, but I've never really seen their videos. Um, I've seen gem reviews quite a lot actually. Um. Okay, I'm just gonna say this, that um, if you don't like Mr. Enter and Phantom Strider, you won't like Jim because he's heavily inspired by both of them. And, yeah. Oh my god, does, do they like put an emphasis on morals? Yes. Yes. Oh my god, I, I, I'm not gonna like him or her. Uh, I'm, but I'm, I am gonna... I'm gonna give Gem Reviews some credit. Gem Reviews is actually funny at times. Way funnier than Mr. I mean, anyone's funnier than Mr. He's way funnier than Strider stuff. It's just really when you start to like think about the points he's making and you're like, oh, okay. It has the same amount of stupidity as both Mr. and Strider, so you're like, I'm not really. I don't think he's even uploading anything. I think he stopped. It. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I called him, like, him or her. I, I had no idea, like, if Jim was, like, a guy or a gal. Oh. Uh, he was a dude. I don't know. Like, if someone were, like, Called Jem, I I would on I would kind of just assume they were a girl, I mean not to be like you know sexist or anything, but I don't know I just yeah. like these reviewers I'm not like the most knowledgeable about. So yeah, uh, for me to talk about reviews, I would mostly just be repeating what I said about prior. So this. Yeah, so yeah, that's I, the thing about yeah. I'm on like Gem's channel, and the last video we uploaded was two months ago. Oh. So, yeah, I, I actually thought he went on for like, I actually thought that his last video was even older than that. But... Yeah. I make comedy. That's all. That that is a terrible slogan. Uh, to be fair, um, uh, Alpha J Show was the one who made the banner. Oh, we got Maybe Alpha J coming up in a bit. Okay, so we talked oh, oh. we we talked about her uh, some, but now let's talk about Robo Buddies. Oh, I like I like Robo Buddies. I think. So unfortunately, she at some point she kind of stopped. She she started like focusing less on views and weird uh, 
vlog ish stuff with Nolan and other stuff. I didn't really care that much for those videos, so I'm I mean, pretty. I'm pretty yeah. sure any time you start like working with Nolan, you you just like lose your train of thought. Like, dude, we should have just included Nolan in this. Nolan's fucking. I don't even know how to describe him. <laughs> well, unfortunately, he's not a reviewer. I mean, he did that rocket power thing, but that doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I like. I said. I like Robot Buddy. Um. I don't really have much to say about her because, like, I don't know. Most of the things I can say about her is just stuff like uh, she makes like a lot of good points. She she talks about the animation a lot better than reviewers do. Um. And also, like, she she also like. She knows how to do that, even in comedic ways. Like, watch yo. Uh, what was the comic? I think it was a Archer or something like that. Like, no, I, she made fun. Yeah. I think it was what like the thinking? web com. No, no, the I don't forget. Remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was also that web comic. Uh, the the one with the Cartoon Network characters, and yeah, like she, she made fun of the. The, the the composition of the panels, the 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 anatomy and it was really funny. And yeah, I like that. You don't really get that much. I wanna believe it was was it Bleed Man's comic? Uh I think I I don't remember. Um like um yeah. But uh, we're uh, we're just gonna talk about um Robo Buddies videos. Are we also gonna talk about certain controversies that happen? Yeah, I'm. I mean, before yes, we go you. to that, I could say something about Robo. I liked her videos. Like, I think her Steven Universe rant is like the best video ever made. Better than like fucking better than anything like stupid edge lords or sjw's could ever make about the show because she focused more or less on like the problems with the show itself not like anything involving politics or that crap because like i don't want to hear about fucking political shit from a kids show i just want to talk i just want to talk about like the show itself man yeah a lot of people accuse the the the, the Steven Universe crew being bad people, like, I've seen people make that argument before, I'm like, ah, dude, fucking come down. Yeah, just because Rebecca Sugar drew, like, Ed, Ed, and Eddie Yowie doesn't mean she's a pedophile. Yeah, and also, the Ed, Ed and Eddie characters are, like, uh, I mean, I, I still wouldn't think that she would be a pedophile, but, um... Ed and Eddie characters are fairly teenage. When Rebecca Sugar drew that, she was a little. I think she was like nineteen, like that. So it's not even. It's not that bad. I want to know even, so even, what Rebecca was doing before Adventure Time, because like that's got to be like a whole Wild West scenario. <laughs> yeah. It would be really. Cool. I think she deleted a lot of her blogs. Yeah, but okay. Now let's talk about like Robo's shit with Enter. Yeah. Um. Okay. I wanted to make a video about this. I just thought about doing so, but there are two things that kept me. One. Um. I wasn't. I mean, Mr. Enter sort of destroyed Robo Bodies with his response the entire uh, conversation, but at least before, um, we didn't really see much of the conversation for me to judge it, um, to see whether or not she had a point or not, and I mean, that's just one of the reasons. The other reason is because I didn't really want to be harsh in on robot bodies because apparently the reason why she reacted that way is because of 
from her, I guess. So I'm like, okay. I don't think I'm gonna make a video about this. I don't really make her upset and stuff. Assuming that she would watch that video, which I don't, I'm not, I don't know if she would, but you know. I mean, at this point, like it's too late to make that video. Yeah, but if I were to make that video like around that time, I don't know if she would watch that video, but it would in fact create more drama. Like it would kind of like add to the drama. And I got the impression that she she just kind of wanted to um, kind of move on from that. So I was like, okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll give her a pass. But yeah, what she did was in fact yeah, like, I, I still can't believe she would even get, like, tr triggered by, like, Anna's mediocre writing. <laughs> That's the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the thing is, like, okay, Robot Buddies, like, she's an artist, alright? Like, one of the things that artists like learn is the idea that everyone expresses what they want and there are times when artists have certain ideas that they want to convey that might not be for everyone and some people will probably get triggered and that's fine that always happens there are some people who probably wouldn't want to watch something that has like domestic abuse or something but that doesn't mean the artist is a bad person or that they shouldn't do that. It just means that it's not for everyone. And I don't know, man. I don't understand why Robo Buddies wouldn't really get that. Because she was kind of like mad because he, he answer wrote a scene where apparently someone manipulated another character in a way that uh, triggered her memories of trauma and now she's just kind of attacking as a person and saying like yeah this is bad you shouldn't have written and given how Mr. Enter was also bullied and manipulated it's concerning why he would include that sound like dude like, um, uh, like you're an artist you should understand this more than anything Sometimes artists just make something that's just not for everyone. This is clearly, like, this was clearly a story or a scene that just wasn't comfortable for you. But that's fine, you know? You don't have to get angry at it. Yeah. I mean, she only did it because, like, she, she was going to make fun of him. But I, I don't know, like... It just it just turned into a mess, and it kind of is more or less her fault. I mean, I don't yeah. want to like discredit any trauma she's had because like, I at least I believe it. But like, if you're gonna like get triggered because of like some some guys like writing for like children, then it's like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, I also think that she was she acted like kind of like she was very uh, dickish like she responded to Mr. Angel like in a respectful way this kind of made me lose a little bit of respect for her because it seemed like Mr. Angel was trying to like he seemed like he was trying to like uh, um I guess kind of apologize okay okay um I will give credit to Robot Bodies and say that Enter's attempt at apology was weird because Enter was all like, Yeah, I came here to apologize, but I don't really know what I did wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, I can understand, Enter... like, I don't think he had any idea, like, Robo was personally offended. Like, yeah, I'm just saying that Mr. Enter probably could have approached her better. Maybe not say, yeah, I want to apologize, but I don't think I did it wrong. Maybe you should have said, okay, um, you clearly have an issue with me. Um, can we, like, settle things? Like, can we, like, some, some kind of, like, settlement, you know? 
maybe I'll apologize, maybe I don't, but let's, let's have a conversation about it. And if he's going there to apologize, then he should have a reason to apologize. Maybe, like, watch the video and see if you actually have some apologize. Not say, yeah, I'm ready to apologize, but please explain to me what I did wrong. Like, that's kind of a stupid way to to approach a conversation. But even then, like, anyone, like, it's clear that Mr. Enter didn't have bad intentions when he did that. So I, I still think that RoboBuddy's response was dick. Yeah, like... I'm 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 gonna guess that like Enter was just writing what he knew, because and I don't know it is it's just it's all over and done with like I don't know how to feel about Robo anymore. She she's probably just gonna keep drawing. Maybe I think she probably put that episode behind her, but but I guess like now, <laughs> oh my fucking god! Of course we had to talk about more old news stuff with scout fly but uh, uh mm, he he's back i'll say that um did you know that he he's, he's uploading videos again oh god no is he like is he still doing his like edge lord crap where he's just trying to be a troll um no he's actually he actually feels sorry for the shit. He's all like, yeah, I was being a dick. I'm sorry. Like, he even said, like, no, YouTube didn't ruin my life. I ruined it. So, yeah, he seems sorry. He said that ever since all of that breakdown, he, he had a real job. He got a real job. And, like, he admitted he was going through some bad he got a new job. He 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 um started new relationships. Like he has new friends now, and those friends like helped him settle with his emotions and stuff. So he seems kind of apologetic. And if you watch his um, his videos now, while it does seem like he's trying too hard to be nice, I also think that he's probably being the most genuine I've ever seen. Because in his um, his cartoon reviewing days, no, he did not seem genuine. He seemed like kind of fake. He was just making videos. Doing his let's 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 call emo phase. While I won't say he wasn't being genuine, I also think that he was being dumb. I don't think he was thinking very rationally what he was doing, stuff like that. It, it seemed like he was going through some dumb emo phase and he would probably just get over it months. And I feel like that's this is the result. Now he's just being the most genuine he's ever been. Again, at times it does seem like he's being a little too nice, but at the same time, I don't think he's phoning in. At least that's kind of the impression I have. I mean, that that just raises, like, even more questions. When he was, like, just this generic... When he was, like, this painfully generic cartoon reviewer, did anyone ever assume he would, like, have this breakdown and try to, like, become a fucking troll? I don't know. I mean... I won't say that I knew that he was faking, but I had the impression that he didn't really seem genuine. I mean, why even, like, talk about modern-day cartoons when he could have talked about something else like video games? Like, cartoons are a pretty niche market on YouTube. Like, games are a lot more, like, general. I mean, I think it's kind of weird because Stuff with Skullfly said that what inspired him to make a video about cartoons was seeing Phantom Strider upload this I don't remember what video it was, but it was a video that gained like a million views. I think it was like top 10 worst, worst Nickelodeon show, something like that, or bad, I don't know. And so he saw how many views he got, uh, and Charlie got, and, and, then, and then stuff was stuck, was all like, hey, you know, I could make a fucking gazillions of views doing that. So I think that the reason why he focused on animation is a mix of inspiration from Phantom Strider, not necessarily in terms of quality of content, but more so in views. 
just he probably just wanted to make this one video that he could gain views and then when he saw that he garnered an audience he was all like okay so i have a piece of fan base composed of cartoon fans so maybe i should be a cartoon reviewer and talk about cartoons that's how it blew up again if you wanted to make probably talk about video games but since if if you were to talk about video games you would like purge his entire following so maybe that's I mean, I don't know. Like, hearing this, like, it just makes him all the more phony. I mean, it, it's hard to say whether or not he was really passionate about these shows, I mean. Or if he was just trying to, like, follow the bandwagon. Uh, the guy, like, I, he admitted that he didn't even watch a show talking about. He also admitted to not Viking Steven Universe, even though he said he. Wait, what did he say? I remember, like, Phantom Strider used to say in, in his cartoon review, this Steven Universe is a good show, you know. But then in his video where he's all like, "Yeah, I was phoning in, I'm actually." a bad dude. I'm actually like edge lord stuff. And uh yeah, in in his video where he revealed that he was actually baking, he said that he didn't like it. He was all like, yeah, it's a show. There's a lot of SJW stuff. The Scoutfly, I think he's more tragic than Enner. Because like with Enner, you can pretty much tell he's genuine. Even if his head is in the right place, but Scoutfly, he's just, he he was just faking it the whole time, and then he just like, in, he just like destroyed himself. I mean, like, if he had just continued, like, reviewing cartoons, in like his generic way, I don't think like, anyone would have complained. Well, except us people who know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like. A lot of people really didn't care about. No, it's not that they didn't care. They were, they were like, you know what? I like stuff with Scout Fly, but then there was also that one side, you know, us who were like, man, his content's like shit. There's no reason to like this channel, but you know, since his videos were generic enough that you wouldn't get triggered from watching it, it was inevitable that some people were like, yeah, he's. He was like Strider with better production values. Except, well, okay, Strider was also genuine. Strider's also genuine in his shit. Yeah. That, even that's... Again, the whole Invader Zim thing kind of puts in question. But... Oh, I can't wait for the day Strider has a breakdown that, that's going to be... Oh my god gotta be okay uh, but now let's get on to the round table um awestruck vox you know i like fox but only on twitter his actual videos are to be fair you know okay you know what I'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna be as fair as possible i'm gonna type the round table just so I can be fair, fair and not say some stuff. But the last time I checked his channel, most of his videos were pretty generic, and the only ones that weren't were about the universe. The thing is, like, I don't really care that much about theory videos of the universe. So, like, what am I supposed to do with this? I mean, I remember I used to watch his Steven Universe theory videos back when I at least cared enough about the lore, but I've never really, like, paid attention to the other roundtable videos, like, I mean, how would you say their videos are compared to, like, I guess the better YouTube cartoon reviewers, like, would you say they put enough amount into, like, making the, the discussions interesting, like, say, maybe Pan? Okay, I'll say one. 
um, the round table. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna compare him to. I'm gonna compare. Oh fuck, we're gonna talk about Velisca Bomb, but that's fine. I'm gonna compare him to Velisca because both of them are very similar in which they upload it. And the round table, since they're a crew and not just one dude, their videos feel less rushed and better handled. Um, that said, unless it's a Steven Universe video, most of their videos are boring. Most of their videos come off as stuff that you just kind of have to upload because this is your job. And, you know, I have to upload something every day. I mean, granted, I don't think their videos are nearly as pointless as Velisca Bomb's videos because, because okay, Velisca Bomb is a one dude. He's, he's, a one, he's, a, he's a one dude. Maybe he, maybe he's hired people and stuff, but at least the last time I checked, it really did seem like he was doing all those videos alone, which is admirable, but at the same time, the quality of his videos. But anyway, with the round table, it feels like everyone has their own goal. I think Vox focuses, focuses a lot more on Steven Universe than and there. Maybe they do also, but I just get the impression that Vox cares a lot more. And then there are other guys that focus on the news. Sometimes Vox also enters in and stuff, stuff like that. But anyway, there seems to be some kind of... Um, they organize their videos a lot better. And as a result, um, the final product come up as better than usual. But at the same time, other videos are just kind of boring. They're not really that interesting because you just gotta upload every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm browsing through their, their I'm browsing through their channel and seeing a video, um, talking about over the garden wall, one of a kind. Like, okay, I guess that's a little more interesting. Than other videos. Um, Big Mouth Season 2 is the best cartoon ever. Okay, actually, that video actually doesn't... It seems kind of... Yeah, Hilda is the it. best cartoon ever. Um, yeah. I, I love him. Then there are also news videos. And... Like, I don't know. I mean... Roundtable is not a bad ch by any stretch, but they're also not good or not good enough for someone to subscribe to them. Sometimes they will upload videos that are above these, but most of them don't move past. Yeah. Okay. So I know. Well, we're we're going to get to like the two main like punching bags, but I guess but I guess if I wanted to say something about Vox is that like and I guess the round table in general is that they honest they seem like a more tightly knit version of Veilski Bum and that like they don't really provide anything substantial or they just like get content out just to like get it out but there's really nothing to hate about them yeah I agree but I don't, I don't know that was poorly me. worded but um but if you follow um Vox's Twitter account like he's really fun like I think he uploads some upload shit I think he posts some pretty funny tweets like I, I genuinely think that he but in his videos, I, I don't know. Maybe if I watch his Steven Universe videos, I would also good. But I just don't care that much about Steven Universe anymore. So, None of us do. I honestly care. Okay. Um. So now Alpha J. Um. Uh, what are your thoughts on Alpha J? Be honest, I'm a little... Well, I mean, there was a time where I was sub to him, but I never watched his videos. I don't know if that says anything, but I think it probably does. Okay, um, I have 
I have some weird opinions on him because I don't watch his videos because most of the stuff he covers are about cartoons I don't I either haven't seen yet or I don't ever plan on seeing it and I don't know like for example, he recently uploaded a video called Did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2012 start off well? I'm like, why do I want to know that? Why, why do I care? You know, I'm never going to watch this cartoon. And even if I do, I'm going to judge the episode for myself. I don't need someone to tell me whether or not it's good or bad. And uh, like, just a lot of videos like that. It see I don't think I guess what I'm trying to say is Alpha J is not the best when it comes to finding topics to cover. I think that sometimes he will have a decent idea. I mean story and I'll and I'll talk about that later. But in terms of topics to cover, he's usually not the best. I think a lot of them are just really bland. And yeah, that's my first issue. Like, like I said, like you know, sometimes he will cover. St- like, okay, for example, he really likes the Looney Tunes show, and he he likes defending it. And I think that's cool. I think that that that's good and all. But then sometimes he'll just talk about I don't know the Adventures of Kid Danger. I'm like, did it start off well? I'm like. I- the adventures of Kid Danger. Who cares? And stuff like that. But that's just my first thing. So, it's him, yeah? Let me get this straight. His whole thing is that he'll cover like an episode of a certain show and like without really thinking, taking into consideration if people have actually seen the episode or the show before and just like give his thoughts on it, expecting us to follow. Which, I don't know, that just seems like it's really hard to get into that kind of review. Because, like, I prefer a review of, like, an entire show. Because, like, then I could, like, be be able to, like, formulate my own thoughts on it. If the reviewer is able to provide a strong case for or against it. Yeah. Because that's really... that's That's also something I wanted to cover, but I actually kind of forgot... And it's the fact that he reviews individual episodes. And, like, most individual episodes are self-contained and don't really serve that much of a purpose in the overall narrative as one. So, why would anyone care about some fuck-off episode from, so, uh, from a show, you know? Like, you gotta make people care. And I just don't think he does that. I think a lot of the times, his videos just don't seem interesting. I mean, it's his his whole thing is kind of sounds like Enner, except Alpha J seems a lot more competent than Enner. Oh, Alpha J is much better than than uh, Mister. Like, no doubt, he's way better. Um, yeah, but that's just my is my first. My other issue with Al, it's kind of okay. I don't want to sound like I don't like Miss Alpha J again. I actually don't watch his videos, and the few ones I've seen, I thought they were competent. All right, so no, no, don't get the impression that I don't like his. Channel. I'm just trying to explain why I'm not that into. It. I'm gonna talk about the execution of his videos. I don't think he's a good script writer. I think that, granted, it's been a while since I watched his videos, so maybe he improved on that, but. At least the last time I watched his videos, he's not very coherent. Like, there are times when he goes on a tangent or he talks about something that doesn't really seem like it has anything to do with the episode. Or, I don't know, he just has this weird way of, of switching subjects that just kind of, just kind of baffles me. And you just get really confused while watching his videos. I'm like, okay, I don't want to watch. I'm, I'm really confused. I'm, my head hurts. I want to do something else. Goodbye. I get that impression a lot. Yeah. used to watch. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. Maybe I should count myself lucky that I've never watched his videos. Like, I, I don't know. At this point, like, it feels like I'm just running on empty. But I know that, like, with these last two people, we'll probably have a bunch to say. So, yeah. I guess let's I talk know. about Veilski Bum 94 now. Yeah, Veilski Bum fucking suck. He's. <laughs> I don't even think it's worse anymore. The production takes that crown, but holy fuck. Like, is there anyone who actually likes Willis Kabum94? I'm pretty sure people just subscribe to him because he offers quote unquote news. Like, <laughs> I really love that argument. Like, every time people, every time people criticize his, um, his reviewing He's all like, yeah, but I'm actually a news channel. I'm like, well, motherfucker, you uploaded a video reviewing SpongeBob. So if you're going to review something, you deserve to be judged. You know? I mean, I'm just on his channel right now, and there is so much garbage on here. Like, I, I don't know how to explain. I mean, I could probably give him credit for talking about stuff that most people have probably ignored. But... But, but these videos are just so short, and he doesn't even go into depth. He just, like, recounts them as if he he were, like, some CNN anchor. He doesn't, like, try to give insight or be interesting with it. It's like, his videos are so short, yet I can barely get through, like, 30 seconds of any particular one. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that really bugs me. Oh, shit, that was a mess. Um, that's the thing that really bugs me about these videos is that even if you look at these quote unquote news videos, they're not really that informative. Like most of the things he ta he brings up, like if you pay attention to like Twitter and stuff, you probably already know about it. So I mean, if you're gonna be a news channel, then you might as well add like a like, data and information that you know that's actually at least kind of newsworthy, just kind of like you know. You're getting something from watching it, but most of the things you just... Okay, I'll say one thing. I think that Veliska Bomb is someone who who is worth subscribing to, but not necessarily clicking his video. He's someone who you should subscribe to so that every time there's some kind of news and you don't know, you don't know, like, you don't know, you don't have any source of news, then you'll see the title and thumbnail, and you'll know that this things happen and whether or not you're interested in it or not to know more about it you'll click on the video and you'll get just the most basic ass information possible with point like with really boring voiceover but whatever you get the news but that'll probably only happen like once in two months because most of his videos are boring and no one would ever I hate I the hate guy is like no, go on oh okay um, I mean, I also hate him, if that's what you're trying to say. Uh, I mean, he's... Um, the guy has, like, 500,000 500, subscribers, but if you actually look at his videos, he gets, like, 30,000, 17,000, 3,000, so not even his subscribers like I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking through this right now, and th this just makes me... Th this is just, like, pointless stuff, like... Here, like, one video I saw is that, like, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but sometimes, like, the ti like, you either get, like, clickbait titles on, like, really insignificant news, or you just get, like, I don't know how to explain it. He's basically a clickbait factory. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, you have no idea what kind of video he's going to do just by, like, the title that could and that could probably be like freaking misleading or he'll just do something or he'll just like reiterate like a similar point like oh the gumball don't hug me i'm scared video isn't out what happened to it he did that like eight times i th i think i don't know yeah if this video gets attention people are going to accuse us of jumping on an old bandwagon Oh, you're shitting on Velisca Bum? Ha ha, how unique. I'm like, yeah, 
We're talking about cartoon reviewers, and we don't like this guy. And he is a cartoon reviewer in a way, because he has, like, reviewed episodes, and those are just as basic as his news videos. Except they're even less entertaining because he's not a good critic. Well, okay, of course he's with not. the news. Okay, here's the thing. Here's like every structure of, of this quote unquote news. He starts off by saying some very, like, okay, I'm gonna. It's funny because I'm gonna use a term that I actually wanted to use for triathlon, but whatever. I'm gonna use it like some, um, somewhat normie introduction he says something that you'll pro- okay let's say he starts off the video talk uh, let's say it's a video about the loud house and he'll probably say something like the loud house is a good series with a lot of likable characters and stuff like that you know something that every fucking cartoon fan probably knows but they probably just want to hear that opinion reiterated so you, so you can feel like, yeah, Velisca Bum is one of us. He feels the exact same way we do. Then he'll talk about the news and just inform some basic stuff with bad delivery. You just won't really get much from his videos because they're boring. I mean, I should be glad. Or if it's not a news video, it's him talking about like an a collection of things like characters or like episodes or moments like oh look at all these times chowder broke the fourth wall or green gumball made i can't did they really say that on gumball this show's third eyes wide open hey look spongebob contains this scene that's really disturbing Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no, wow. Actually, the Teen Titans Go Teen Titans crossover is a thing. Let me pump out 12,000 fucking videos on this garbage. Look, is there, like, a, I, I, I think anything we could possibly say about Velisca Bomb has, you know... I think our our thoughts on him are somewhere, somewhere in the middle of this video. You know, we. It, that's the thing about Velisca Bomb is that his content is like so bland that you don't even have much to say about it. Like, yeah, his videos are boring. His news are pointless. His reviews are bad. His jokes are bad. Oh, what but let's turn that shit it? up to, like, 11 on every front. Let's talk about a guy that I think everyone we know absolutely despises. And let me, let me <laughs> just say this. This guy in particular makes Veilski Bum seem like Einstein or someone equivalent <laughs> to him. Yeah, you know him. You hate him. Yeah. It's the rise and fall of Nickelodeon, a.k.a. Clint. Yeah, you guys probably heard of him because he's fucking everywhere on Twitter. Like, yeah, oh he is. God, like, dude. do you know how irritated I got with seeing him retweeted on my fucking dash? Like, dude, I don't fucking get it. Like, I, I've never followed him in my entire life. And yet I've seen more of his tweets than anyone I follow on Twitter. That is the most retarded thing imaginable. I don't understand why people retweet this fucking bland ass Twitter page. I don't care. No, it's even better. Him like posting, like just say me overdone memes. Oh, look, uh, Billy saying destroy us all, even though he's sharing the wrong screenshot. Like, I don't really get it, dude. I, I, don't, I don't know. Understand. I don't know. Like, he started out as a Facebook page admin, and, like, his stuff on Facebook wasn't really great. I remember, like, reading about this on his, like, Encyclopedia Dramatica article, yeah, he has one, that, like, he did this rant on the splat, if you even remember what the splat was. Maybe, I don't know. But, that's the funny thing about, that's the, the beauty of Triathlon, is 
that, that guy brands himself as some kind of guy who spreads positivity on modern animation. Like, motherfucker, your name is literally the rise and fall of Nickelodeon. Don't play the more high ground, okay? Like, no, no, you don't get it. He shows tough cartoon. love towards Nickelodeon. Well, well, if... Like, I don't know if you remember, but there was a time when it, this especially during the whole Thundercats roar and um, fucking Spice and Steven and what's not... Like, there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, modern animation is fucking ass. We don't like modern cartoons. And the guy would just post, like, a shitload of tweets of, like, like, guys, you haven't done any fucking research. Like, look at all of this great part animation. Like, saying that modern animation is bad is, like, you know, you know it's bad, I guess. It's wrong. Like, it's wrong to criticize current day cartoons. They're better than what the eighties had. Oh shit! And that guy has Gumball's cock right deep on his throat. They, no, I think he has Jimmy Neutron's balls, like set to permanent brain blast in his fucking mouth because he just loves Jimmy Neutron so fucking much. It's it's just obnoxious. Hey, did you know that? Look, um, the Amazing World of Gumball posted this port wall joke. It's so fucking revolution. That's the one. Ah, I don't even know where to start. I hate, and I fucking hate this mentality that a lot of cartoon fans have. That it's not even a mentality. It's just it's some level of naivety, and it's seeing like port wall jokes and adult in the windows and treating as if it's for the if, it, if it's the most revolutionary thing imaginable because these same people they want people to respect kids cartoons and see it as like just like any other medium and yet every time cartoon for kids like do something that's kind of like appealing to older audiences they act as if it's the most revolutionary thing imaginable even though first of all no if you've been watching cartoons long enough you probably should be used to seeing that stuff and secondly you're just you're just lowering the bar for cartoon you're basically saying that oh because they're doing this thing like it deserves some amount of like special respect like no dude it, i just don't like and trifling is like the embodiment of this because every time like he like he's just this is a weird boner for like fourth wall jokes and like adult in the winners he'll just like fucking lose his shit and I don't mean like losing shit and like he gets angry. In fact, it's the opposite. He just gets really, ex really excited. Like, he sounds like he's he's like thirteen. Like he's a newborn cartoon fan. He just found out that cartoons can be appealing not just for younger audiences. And I was just kind of excited for that. Well, all of us already know that cartoons can be appealing to adults. And every time we see these stuff, we're like, yeah. It's it's that it's funny, but it's not it's not anything interesting. Not interesting. It's not anything revolutionary, I guess. Yeah, like when you see his freaking Twitter, it's mainly just like I don't know how to. It's like the most normy ass crap ever. It's like like what we've been talking about earlier. I mean, I I'm pretty. Really I mean, I know that most of this stuff he probably steals from like. Tumblr, Facebook, and I have no problem with, like, stealing memes, but, like, what I do have a problem with is, like, his ego. Like, he sees himself as more than just, like, a meme poster or, like, shit poster. Like, he thinks he's a journalist. Like, do you remember when, like, Saima, Zar Saima the president of Nickelodeon, was, like, kicked, was, like, booted out? He, he claims that he was the one who, like, broke the, who, like, broke the news or got her fired. I don't remember what he told Pie Guy. Even though most of the criticisms he had, everyone else already had that. They just didn't really put... And yeah, he, he was like, he was like going on some victory lap where it was like, yeah, I did it. I brought her down. Nickelodeon will finally get out of its stupor. You know, make make Nickelodeon great again. All that yeah. shit. And, um... Yeah. Here's the thing. A lot of people, like a lot of fucking people, 
follow trap. And I think everyone for a long time had some amount of respect for him because he saw him as a moral guardian. Not, yeah, sort of guardian ever since the whole Butch Hartman controversy, the that president of Nickelodeon. Everyone saw him as someone who was like a crusader. Okay, that whole Butch Hartman thing really made me mad. Not because, like, I was a big defender of Butch, but just because, like, Trafon thought he, with his clout he could actually get Butch to, like, pay for his crimes of, like, Oaxis Entertainment, even though there was no way someone who, an animation veteran, would give a shit about, like, what some fucking retard on, like, Twitter who just, like, who, who's a fucking meme stealer, just, like... Oh, would ever shit. be able to like bring some like fifty year old dude to justice? Like, god damn it! Like, do you want people to like make fun of your dumb ass? Oh god, I just remembered something. You know, um, dueling duelist drill. No, he was the guy who ah, he okay. There's this guy. Like, okay, in one of the videos that blew up about Butch Hartman, um. In one of those videos where he was all like, yeah, I don't listen to criticism because no one knows what he's talking about. He was responding to this guy called Dueling Duelist Drew. And this guy, ever since Butch Hartman responded to him that way, he's been kind of depressed. And he was one of the people who were alongside Pie Guy and um, Trafford and stuff. And I'm just going to say this. Triathlon was annoying when it came to the Butch Hartman drama, like really fucking annoying. But this dueling duelist Drew, he was way fucking worse. Like that guy actually wanted to sue Butch Hartman for emotional damage. He wanted to get Butch Hartman to the Dr. Phil show. He actually wanted that. Like that is next level stupidity. I want to believe that this guy was a, a turbo spurg. Yeah, he, he did say that Butch Hartman was like a father to him or something like that. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my god, I guess Butch Hartman did make his childhood after all. Yeah, he doesn't seem like the most socially well-adjusted person in the world, so I guess I guess we're just kind of bullying him. <laughs> I don't, you know, but I mean, when, when it comes to well, Trafon, we're just giving him a little tough love. Yeah. But hey, don't criticize Trafon, because every time you do, he'll just say, I'm just doing this for fun, guys. Like, give me a love. Oh, I can't wait. Maybe he'll actually, like, watch this <laughs> video, and he'll be like, and please, why, why do you make fun of me? Like, I don't do anything wrong. You're just jealous oh. that cartoon, you... And I'm like, motherfucker, most of the cartoons you talk about, I fucking love. I just hate it when you dumb them down. Like, I fucking love it when Chowder makes fourth wall jokes because I like fourth wall jokes. But when you, like, try to share it with everyone else, you act like this is revolutionary when it fucking isn't. It's just a silly gag that anyone should be able to enjoy. Don't try to make cartoons high art. Just try to normalize them so that there is no stigma around them. Yeah, that's the thing I want. I want people to normalize this. Not... I get really fucking angry thinking about trap on. Like That guy posts like shitty Billion Man memes. I'm like, dude, fuck off, dude. Don't talk about Billion Man. You're just making it look bad. Oh, he's like, like oh my Man god, like, Fred like, Flintstone oh. appeared in Billion Man D. All the, the world worlds collide. Oh. Dude, no. Don't. Just don't bother, all right? Just don't bother talking about Billion Man. We're just going to make, make Billion Man come up with some kind of show for, you know, and yeah, but hey, he's just doing this for fun, so you know. Yeah, he's it's doing okay. it for fun. He's not like. I mean, he. Yeah, I mean, you know, he treats himself as a news page, but you know, he's just doing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not like. Oh my fucking god. I don't know. Like, I remember when he got called out for, like, posting that 
Steven Universe um Ed Ed and Eddie video and I I mean like that 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 oh, was yeah. like yeah I remember if that. he were to have just credited them initially instead of just going on that tirade where like oh man you're all against me I was just trying to help that person out that that, that was a dick move there like you don't just like take videos that were worked oh, on by someone shit. else and just like credit them as your own I mean I've I've I posted videos, but I don't try to like pretend like they're mine. When I when I that controversy left me very upset because when that happened, I was I was busy. Like that that was happening like for like hours, and I was busy doing something. And then when I noticed that when I noticed the controversy, I'm like, oh my god, this is pretty fucking spicy. Finally, everyone opened their eyes and realized, you know what, Trevon is shit. But then it was like um, 10 p.m. and I had to sleep because I had. So yeah, I I didn't really pay too much attention to the controversy, but I did know what happened, and it was the most hilarious thing imaginable. Alpha J Show was fucking shitting on him, and it was funny as fuck. I loved it. When Alpha J calls your ass out, then you know you're a fucking retard. Yeah. And also, I don't know if I should say this. He probably he probably won't like to say this, but uh, um, remember what I said about the thing where people only really had respect for Trafon because he seemed like a good guy, a nice guy who cares about animation. And when I po I posted, I actually posted a tweet saying this that. Yeah, I think everyone deep down knew that the triathlon sucked and one way to say that. And um, Alpha J Show DM'd me and said, yeah, this is actually not that far away. From so, yeah, I think people don't, I don't think people really like Trap. I think people just kind of respect him. But this controversy realized, yeah, I have absolutely no reason to respect this guy. So now, you know what? Fuck Trap when he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, well, I guess that's it. I mean, do you got anything else to say about any of these reviewers before we like go? Um, I gotta like go I do something. I have... Yeah, I mean, the only thing I have to say is that I'm fucking bored of the cartoon community, so have fun. And keep in mind, we're still gonna like watch cartoons and shit. I mean, tech, currently I'm gonna go through all of the Ben 10 series. Because I hate my life. Also because Pie Guy compelled me to. I I'll I'll probably watch some weeb and then I'll probably I don't like things. I just we talk about But whatever. I guess that's all I have. Okay, well with that, um this was the first episode of the rebooted version of Jack's Corner. It was a little bit rough around the edges. I mean, not as big of a disaster as the Thundercats ran I did, but I'm hoping to like do more of these with like other people that I'm And hopefully this gets viewed. I mean the the, the High Guardian Spice video got like over a thousand for Triss. I mean that's impressive for him, I mean and that was just yeah. me recording on Audacity. I don't know if I'm even going to save the file for this. Or, I mean, I mean, what I should say is if the file for this will even be saved. But, you know, yeah, I, I don't I, care. You know, uh, now that I think about it, I really hope this video won't get popular because we're probably going to be the most hated guys in I don't really fucking care. Like, I don't even do anything controversial on Twitter, so and they'll probably be like, Oh man, this guy hates all these people? Holy shit, what an asshole. And it's like, who cares? Yeah. I hate every, every cartoon reviewer anyway. <laughs> well, except Nick. Yeah. Nick. Nick's a good guy. Come on um, Triss's podcast. Yeah, come come to our podcast. He Triss is a better person Why? than Nolan. Nolan sucks. Triss is actually a good guy. I like him. I don't like him. It's funny. funny because I, I 
I didn't really used to have a problem with oh, no I need to tell you something about Tris when we stop recording, but yeah, so this was like the so this was Jack's corner. I'm I'm I have yet to determine who my next guest will be if I can get anyone else on, but just stay tuned. I got more ideas cooking up in the pipeline.